Welcome back. We talked about creating virtual machines earlier, but the real power of Azure is when I can create a virtual network. That gives me the ability to put all my virtual machines together where they can communicate in a secure way. In this discussion, I'm going to talk about creating a virtual network in Azure. I can move down to Networks and choose Create Virtual Network here, or I can go to New Virtual Network and create a virtual network here. Personal opinion, I seldom use Quick Create. I typically use Custom Create so that I can get it configured just the way I want it. So the first thing I have to do is, is name my virtual network. So I'll give it a name of TS2 Virtual Network and then pick a location. So location is what data center do I want this placed in. Because we're going to do some site to site work and um, Azure Site Recovery discussions later in this series, I'm going to place this in the East US data center because right now only East and West in the US support Azure Site Recovery replicas. Central US doesn't support those yet. So I'll go ahead and pick East US. I can define DNS servers here. The great thing is, is I can come back and define these later. By default, Azure will give me some DNS servers, but there will be reasons like when I run Active Directory in Azure where I'll want to use my own DNS servers. So I'm going to go ahead and configure this network for point-to-site and site-to-site -site VPN connectivity, and I'm going to define a new local network. That way we can go through all of these options. Express Route gives me the ability to have high-speed network connections. Think Ethernet to the back door via an MPLS provider into the Azure data centers. But this will walk us through all the steps of the wizard so we can see those. Point-to-site connectivity. Point-to-site connectivity means a client machine VPNing into Azure. Think of my desktop clients. What I do is because I have basically three IP ranges that I can use, you can use any range you want, but by default Azure gives you these three choices. What I've done is, is by personal convention, chosen to make 172, the 172 range, my mobile users, my point to site connected users, so that if their VPN into Azure and I need to help them troubleshoot something just by doing an IP config I can identify how did they get connected to Azure so that's point to site site to site is where I define my connection to an on-premises network so how can my network be half on-premises and half in Azure and then I define the VPN device ID now this IPv4 address needs to be a public facing IPv4 address and you cannot NAT it so no natting here, we need to dedicate an IPv4 address to this. And then it's asking for the starting IP address of my on-premises network. Because part of what we're doing in setting up a virtual network is defining routes for routers. So I need to tell my routers where things are. So what I'll do is, since I'm connecting to a demo network, I'll go ahead and define this. So one of the things I do is, you'll notice this 192.168.220. And Back here on my point to site, I use 220 as well. Because I create a lot of virtual networks, I try to leave breadcrumbs so I see what I've done. And this 220 equates to the last octet of my on-premises IPv4 address. So if I have multiple site-to-site -site VPNs up and running at a time, and I have to start troubleshooting, these little breadcrumbs just clue me into what network I'm actually working with. Now, I've defined my mobile users, I've defined my on-premises. Now I need to define what my network looks like in Azure. So I go with the 10 dot range here and again I put my 220 in here and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, and pick a slash 16 and then I can define multiple subnets if I want. I'm gonna go with one subnet right now and just do 256 IP addresses. Then I have to add my gateway subnet. Whenever I define a network with a point to site or a site to site connection to it. I have to also define a gateway. The gateway is where Microsoft puts its router to route your Azure virtual network to your on-premises virtual network. And so it needs just a couple IP addresses there and I put that at 10.220.0.0. Now I can say create this virtual network and it'll take just a few minutes to create and I'll come back to you once it's created. Okay so now our virtual network's been created and we can drill into it and see more things about it. The first thing we're going to do is have to define a gateway. So create gateway and what this actually does is now asks Azure to go provision a router for us and that'll take 
10 to 15 minutes to provision, but once it's provisioned, then we'll get a public facing IPv4 address of our router. While we're waiting on that, I'll also show you, here's our network configuration. So again, we don't have any DNS servers yet, but I could come in and add DNS servers at any time within my virtual network. My point to site connectivity, again, here's the IP range that we chose, and then my site to site connectivity. And I've chosen again to not use express route because that means working through an MPLS provider for a higher speed connection, but additional cost. The other thing I want to point out is under local networks, this is where we defined our on-premises network. So again, you can see the address space we're using, the VPN gateway address that we're using as well. Moving back to virtual networks, we're waiting on this gateway to be created. What I'm going to do is talk about the gateway in our next session. So I'll talk about site to site and point to site and how you make those work in subsequent sessions. So again, thank you for your time and I'll talk to you soon.